summary of Did Grace Abolish Torah? We just saw ten common misconceptions, all of which boil down to the ambiguous translation of the word law, nomos. Jesus answered, You err because you do not understand the scriptures or the power of God. Matthew 22, 29 False doctrines stem from those who do not know the difference between the law, the Torah, the instructions of Yah, the law, the spirit of life, and the law of the curse of death, or the law referring to the physical patterns Moses was instructed to make of the heavenly, the reality of Messiah. There is only one law by which mankind is bound or under a yoke of slavery, the law of sin and death or the curse originated with the first man, Adam, eating from the fruit of the death-causing tree called the knowledge of good and evil or bad. Genesis 2:17. Mankind has no need to be saved, freed or released from the law, Torah, that is holy the commandment or instruction that is called holy, righteous, and good. Romans 8, 2. Those who know the Torah will not confuse it with the law of commandments and decrees that were abolished in Messiah's flesh. Ephesians 2, 15. When we know the difference between the Torah of truth and the handwriting of decrees that stood against us, there is no confusion about what the Messiah took away, nailing it to the cross. Colossians 2.14 Be gracious to me, O God, according to your unfailing, merciful, loving kindness. According to your great, merciful compassion, blot out my transgressions. Psalm 51.1 It is the record of our sin that stands against us. When we turn from our sins, they will be blotted out or taken away. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 3.19 We also covered some misunderstandings about the new, renewed, or spiritual covenant. The first is growing old, aging, becoming obsolete, and will soon disappear. Hebrews 8.13 In contrast, the Torah of Yah is the living and active word, it is spiritual and will stand forever, Isaiah 40, 8, and 1 Peter 1, 25. As opposed to being obsolete and disappearing, Yah will put His spiritual Torah within our minds and write it on our hearts. For this is the covenant that I will cut with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yah. I will put my Torah within their minds and write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." Hebrews 8.10, quoting Jeremiah 31.33. We will be given a new heart, with His Spirit within us. Eternal life is the ultimate gift of our Creator. And I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my Spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and be careful to obey my rules. Ezekiel 36, 26, and 1 Peter 1, 23. We are born anew as children of Yah, and our spiritual life-giving Father will cause His seed to practice righteousness. By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil, or the accuser, Diablos. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. 1 John 3.10 In this physical life we are still dying, and the wages of sin is still death. Our hope is in the same good news that was foretold from the first promise of the seed, the Messiah, who would crush the head of death and bless all nations with renewed life. Genesis 3.15 and Galatians 3.8 Those who prevail in doing right end up back in the garden, where they will be given the prize to eat from the tree of life, the eternal life in Messiah. Romans 6.23 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. To the one who prevails, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 7 The promised Messiah is not the end of the law. 
He is the end goal or purpose of the law. For Messiah is the end goal of the law, unto righteousness, life, to everyone who believes. Romans 10, 4. In conclusion, make sure to know the following New Testament verses that will put a quick stop to any confusion caused by man-made doctrines. Do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot nor a stroke of a pen will disappear from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Matthew 5, 17-20 Do we then overthrow the Torah by this faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we uphold the Torah. Romans 3, 31 Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its desires. Romans 6, 12 Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either sin which leads to death, or of obedience which leads to righteousness, life. Romans 6, 16 What then shall we say, that the Torah is sin? May it never be. Yet if it had not been for the Torah, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet, if the Torah had not said, You shall not covet. Romans 7, 7 so the Torah is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Romans 7, 12 For we know the Torah is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. Romans 7, 14 For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Messiah from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2 Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, Torahlessness. Sin is Torahlessness. 1 John 3, 4 Who he himself bore our sins, not the Torah, in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 and Isaiah 53, 4-11 Know him and be known by keeping his commandments. Grace, meaning favor, did not abolish the Torah. Grace and truth are the light of Torah. The physical examples found in our Creator's Torah reveal mankind's spiritual salvation from death. Those who walk in the way of truth and life are known by their actions. Even a child is known by his actions whether his conduct is pure and upright. Proverbs 20, verse 11. How do we know if we've entered spiritual life? If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Matthew 19, verse 17. Jehovah's commandments define life. They reveal the actions or fruits of the pure and upright. When he inscribed them on stone, it symbolized the hardness of mankind's heart spiritual life is inscribed on spiritual hearts and minds. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, declares Jehovah. I will put my laws in their hearts and inscribe them on their minds. Hebrews 10 verse 16 and Jeremiah 31 verse 33. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who is Jehoshua, meaning He is, He was, He shall be, salvation, Messiah, your Anointed One, whom you have sent, John 17, verse 3. By this we can be sure that we have come to know Him, if we keep His commandments, 1 John 2, verse 3. If anyone says, I know Him, but does not keep His commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him, 1 John. 2 verse 4. No one who remains in him keeps on sinning. Sin is turning from the commandments. No one who continues to sin has seen him or known him. 1 John 3 verse 6. Those who know their Creator keep his commandments. Those who do not walk in the way of life will be told, Depart from me, I never knew you. 
and I will tell them plainly, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, which is Torahlessness. Matthew 7 verse 23. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15, verse 21 and verse 23. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. John 15 verse 10 and verse 20. What is love? And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the very commandment you have heard from the beginning, that you must walk in love. 2 John 1 verse 6. But if anyone keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2 verse 5, 6, and 7. And we will receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what is pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3 verse 22. Whoever keeps his commandments remains in God and God in him. And by this we know that he remains in us by the spirit he has given us. 1 John 3 verse 24. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. 1 John 5 verse 2. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. 1 John 5 verse 3. And the dragon was enraged at the woman, and went to make war with the rest of her children, who keep the commandments of God, holding to the testimony of Jesus and the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. Revelation 12 verse 17 and Revelation 22 verse 14. There is perfect freedom in doing what the Torah says. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, the Torah, and continues to do so, not being a forgetful hearer but doing what it says, this man shall be blessed in all he does. James 1 verse 25. The essence of the Torah is to love one another. In everything then, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the essence of the Torah and the prophets. Matthew 7 verse 12. If you really keep the royal law, as stated in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. James 2 verse 8 and verse 12. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments, and teaches others to do the same, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom. Matthew 5 verse 19.